I'd like to introduce Professor Yemi Usibaja, Vice President of Nigeria, a distinguished law professor. And uh, I'd like to invite him uh, to make his comments and to respond to some of the statements that were made by Asim. Uh, thank you very much, Kim. And um, uh, let me just say it's such a great pleasure to be uh, with you all. And um, this has been an extremely uh, stimulating conversation. And, and let me say uh, first that um, the, the, the challenges you know, that we face uh, in Nigeria, you know, just as uh, I think um, Nasir has already alluded to, of course, mass, even the population. Uh, that us in made, you know, perhaps we have the advantage of being able to manage ourselves uh, or, our, or our own uh, problems in, 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 in smaller measure or, you know, dividing up as it were the country. Of course, we run a federation, which means that uh, uh, Nasir could do some very excellent work up there in Kaduna. Lagos could do some excellent work or the state could do some excellent work. You know, but of course, you know, by the very nature of these, uh, by the very nature of this uh, pandemic, it also means that you run the risk of everything uh, going south if some state isn't doing as well as it ought. So I, I, I think, you know, in the end, we, we, we have that advantage that we're able to almost isolate, as it were, you know, uh, responses and even look at best practices across the various states and try and, you know, uh, ramp up wherever we find that there are deficiencies. But, but, but that's just to the point that, that, that that's in need. I'd just like to ask a few questions. I, I really would uh, hate to pass up the opportunity of so many uh, uh, very bright minds here and not to ask questions and to uh, waste the time talking uh, or making my own views. Let, let, let me ask Amanda, you know, uh, if I could get some free advice uh, from, uh, from uh, McKinsey on this point. I wonder what you think, you know, uh, about some of the current, uh, so, some of the current uh, conversation going on uh, between African uh, ministers of finance, uh, the economic uh, community for, uh, sorry, the, uh, the ECA on this whole question of converting uh, sovereign commercial debt to new concessional paper, backed up, you know, or guaranteed as it were by um, multilaterals. Some have suggested that uh, perhaps we could ask the e e some of the G7 countries uh, to use their SDR rights and the IMF to, you know, support this whole effort. And because, you know, of course, one of the major problems we have at the moment is the point that you made, you know, debt servicing and spending so much uh, resources on debt servicing at a time when we can, you know, really hardly afford uh, to run the care of the other business uh, that, we need to, uh, that, that we need to do. I'd like to ask what your views are on the other question that I'd like to ask is, uh, you know, uh, I hope Ahmed is still there, uh, Mubarak, uh, Professor Mubarak, I hope he's still there. Right, I'd like to ask him, you know, just, uh, you know, because, okay, we, we've done a lot uh, of uh, on conditional transfers, especially within the context of our social investment, but we're now looking at how to possibly enlarge the scope of that and do more. Now, we're looking beyond uh, using cash rental for staying at home. We're, we're, we're trying to see whether this can address some of the problems of, you know, the, some of the increasing problems of poverty that we're likely to find now, given just the disruptions. Aside from the lockdown, even just the disruptions to the economy have meant, as you pointed out, that the daily paid worker simply has no means of working, and so many people have been laid off. So what do you think about cash transfers? I mean, to what extent do you think that these are useful in, uh, in, in, in stimulating the economy, but more money to take out of poverty? And then one last question, uh, one last question, and this is 
uh, the question, and I, anyone who could answer this. Now, we've been talking a lot about targeting small businesses, target support for small businesses, target support for MSMEs and all of that. Now, given our own circumstances, I mean, I, I, I just, you know, uh, I'm enthralled by what we see in some of the countries, you know, especially in the West, where because there is some, you know, reasonable data about all of the MSMEs that are available, they're able to target directly. What do we do? I mean, here we have uh, loads of one-man businesses. The informal sector is truly informal, you know. And, and when you say eight and informal, that is a massive part of the economy. How do you target small businesses? Is it a small loan, you know, and or are we looking at something more creative? And if, if there is something more creative, I certainly would like to uh, to know. So these are the, the, the questions. Uh, these are the questions I have. And if there are any other questions that you'd like me to answer, I'd be happy to. Thank you.